everybody, Zach again, NewTutorial.com, coming in and making a video for you today. Um, is Easter and Ishtar related? <laughs> There's going to be a hot potato. Um, and you will find ministries out there who will say, no, oh no, Zach, these are not related. We've now proven that these are not related. See, the worship of Ishtar died out about 500 years before Christ was even on the scene. So it's in no way related to Easter that we have today. No, no. That's a bunch of nonsense. Ishtar is absolutely Easter. Okay. And don't think like people in my, even in my movement, they're like, you're just quoting Alexander Hislop. No, I have never used Hislop in any of my, any of my productions or any of my proof text ever, even though I think he was right on a lot of things. Um, I can give you lots of reasons why I'm right without using Hislop. <laughs> okay, Hislop, Alexander Hislop, I think was his name. And he was a writer and uh, a lot of his stuff has been supposedly discredited because he had lack of sources. But um, I can give you sources outside of him, you know, and, and I'm sure some of these are some of the sources he had. But forget Hislop. I don't care about Hislop. Is Ishtar related to Easter? Yes. Yes. It's the same thing. Don't tell me, oh, because Ishtar, the worship of Ishtar died out 500 years before the Messiah. It's not related to Easter. Now, see, all these fertility goddesses are the same thing. Have you guys ever seen this chart? This is a chart you'll see often used by creation evangelists. And they will use this to show that a legend of the flood existed um, amongst all these cultures. You know, so you have like Chinese cultures, Mexican cultures, whatever, all these cultures around the world, and they all have a legend in their own culture of the flood. And they vary differently. I mean, there's sometimes there's um, there's a different sized boat, or there's different people on the boat, or there's different animals on the boat, or there, it, was, it happened for a certain length of time. There's different variations to the legend, but every culture around the world has a legend of the flood. Thus, these creationists say, and I agree with them, that proves there was a flood because all these cultures have sort of the same story. It differs a little bit, but it's the same story. You can do the same thing with bare-breasted fertility goddesses. You, you, let's take let's take Ishtar as as starting number one, even though there was ones before her, Atargetes and some others. If, let's just let's just say Ishtar. Ishtar is number one. Let's go with that first, <laughs> and use that as your base. Now you have Venus, you have Diana, you have Isis. You have Melusine. You have all these bare-breasted fertility goddesses who have very similar attributes and characteristics. They just differ by name and some of, the, some of their attributes by culture. Let's take a look at this chart I put together a few years ago. Here's the chart that I made that show the similarities between fertility goddesses. Okay, and I call this diffusionism mythology. Diffusionism mythology. Hey, I came up with that phrase. So if anyone else out there uses it later on, you know I came up with it first. Because I went back and I'm like, okay, the meaning of the words, you have mythology and you have diffusion, diffusionism. From one, there are many. It diffuses out into many. And that's exactly what you see here. You have bare-breasted fertility goddesses. Look at all of them. You have Babylon, ancient Syria, Egypt, Greece, Rome, Sumerian, Russia, India, China, Indo-European, Germanic, uh, France, Celtic, Aboriginal, Mesopotamian, and Caribbean. And there was tons of others. So many others. I mean, I could have kept going. I could have made a whole another chart with, the, with double this amount or triple this amount of goddesses that share attributes with some of these major ones that you see here. Okay. And, you know, you have the same shared characteristics on so many of these things. Bare-breasted, fertility, they're related to fertility in childbirth. They're related to fertility in springtime. They're related to water. They're, they have mermaid or fish serpent type characteristics. They're, they're uh, 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 hailed to in war or battle, or uh, they're, they're some way connected to sun and sunrises or healing or a connection to have a connection to eggs, or they're connected to some Venus or celestial body, some planetary body out there. Over and over again, you see the same thing, which shows you that these are all the same person. It's all the same woman. And in that video I did a while back on eggs and bunny rabbits showing the pagan origins of Easter, I showcased a professor in Oklahoma reading from a 2,000-year-old text written by a guy named Apuleius. Apuleius. And he, as he's reading, shows this is 2,000-year-old text he's reading from. He proves that this is all the same person. I am the mother of nature and the mother of life, the mistress of the elements, the first child of time, the supreme divinity, the queen of heaven and hell. 
I am the one who is worshipped in many forms. I am Minerva. I am Venus. I am Diana. I am Demeter and Hera. And among the Egyptians, who exceed all others in ancient matters, I am called by my true name, Isis. And Isis is listed here. I have Egypt, I have Isis. Look at all the ones that she fulfills for that. Bare-breasted, fertility, childbirth, fertility, springtime, water, um, sunrises, healing, connection to eggs, and she's connected to a Venus or celestial body. All of these things, when you research them, they're connected in some way according to that, those, those parameters. That they have those characteristics. Uh, the one I see the most usually is um, a fertility and childbirth or springtime fertility. Um, and... The only ones I didn't get checked off on that was uh, Melusine in France. That, this Melusine, by the way, is the one you see every time you go into a Starbucks drive through uh, Melusine is based on that goddess, bare-breasted fertility goddess. She's kind of like a mermaid. Uh, but that's what you see every time you go drink a Starbucks coffee. Why do you have a, a pagan fertility goddess in your house or in your car? I, don't, I have no idea why if you're a worshiper of the god of creator and heaven, of heaven and earth. But um, Aboriginal Dilga um, and the Mesopotamian goddess uh, Asherah, um, I didn't find fertility. I mean, if I dug more, probably if I did more extensive research, I could probably check those boxes too. But I didn't. So I left them blank until someday when I do find them. But um, some of these are, again, are connected, have connection to eggs. Ishtar and Easter, same thing. Let's take a look at what Answers in Genesis says. Answers in Genesis says, according to various sources, the name Easter has its origin with a goddess of the Anglo-Saxons named Ostra, or Istra, Estra, Estera, Ostera, similar spellings and various sources. It's believed that she is the goddess of the dawn and was worshipped in the spring by pagans in northern Europe and the British Isles. In the two Babylons, Alexander Hislop named, claimed Ostra is actually a name derived from the Babylonian goddess Astarte. Um, now, I, I agree with that. I agree with that synopsis. Answers in Genesis continues, while many of the claims in the books are sound, the connection of Ostra to these other goddesses is tenuous at best. How in the world can they come to that conclusion when they're the ones using the same stupid chart about the flood to say that there's a common flood legend all around the world, but when they see the connections to all these bare-breasted fertility goddesses, eh, that's tenuous at best. Stop. Just Stop. <sighs> No, there's a connection. Easter, Easter, Ishtar, Venus, Diana, all of these Isis, all of these goddesses are the same. But they differ between cultures. You had the Tower of Babel, you had the Father come down and confuse all the languages. Now everyone has the same gods that they're worshiping, the false pagan gods are worshiping, <clears throat> but now they're all under different names. And over time, in region, the cultures change, and they had they develop different practices to worship their gods and goddesses, their false pagan gods. So today, three thousand years later, you've got different worshiping of these gods and goddesses. There's variations, lots of variations, lots of lots of little differences, but there's a baseline there that you can see that's constant throughout all of these bare-breasted fertility goddesses. If you can't see the connection between Ishtar and Easter, it's because you don't want to see it. And that's fine. All right, we'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.